I now have a valid excuse for using ragtime music in my video, and no one can stop me! <laughs> hey everybody, my name is Kays, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be drawing some old-timey rubber holes 1930s cartoon characters, except they aren't actually from the 1930s because I made them up and I am not 100 years old. Those who know me know I like to make animations, and that animation is my passion. Those who also know me know that I love to make fictional cartoon animal characters. So why not mix up the two together and make some old looking cartoon characters, except for I'm not animating them right now. So, yeah. <clears throat> Meet Kangan Kangaroo and Wally Wallaby. Kangan is a jailbird who has some anger management issues, and Wally is an optimistic coach hired on to train Kangan to manage his anger in a healthy manner. A good old fashioned wallop in that jailhouse ring! Despite how I've presented them so far in this video, these two aren't actually new characters of mine. I've had them for around two to three years now. And I've shared them on DeviantArt, but I don't know if I've shared them on YouTube quite yet. I first came up with the idea for these guys when I was drawing Mickey Mouse from Steamboat Willie. Around that time, I had been watching some videos of how kangaroos fight because it looks like they're boxing. That's when I decided I wanted to make a kangaroo boxing character who is in the rubber hose sort of style. I then gave him a little coach buddy in the form of Wally Wallaby because wallabies are like mini kangaroos and I thought it would be cute. I then kind of imagined a story for the two with the synopsis being basically what I've already told you. It's not too complex because I had imagined it being an old episodic cartoon and those didn't really have very complicated stories. They were mostly made to be funny. I haven't drawn these two all that much and I felt like drawing them again so I did. Except this time with a twist. As you can see in the past I've drawn these two in black and white because they were meant to be 1920s cartoon characters. This time I'm drawing them in color. I wanted to draw them as if they were just transitioning from the black and white film era in the 20s to the Technicolor film in the 30s, which is why they still have the same rubber hose cartoon style, but they're in color now. I'd imagine as the years go on, their designs would change to become more detailed and realistic like we see with other cartoon characters from the time, like the Looney Tunes and Disney characters, but right now, they're still in their rubber hose phase. I feel like now is where I should probably explain what a rubber hose style is, since I keep mentioning it, and I don't want to leave anybody confused. Basically, a rubber hose style is the style style of cartoons used from around the 1910s to the 30s, which you would probably have already inferred by now. But the reason why they call it the rubber hose style is because the way the characters were drawn typically during this time period involved the characters having very noodle-like limbs that could stretch and bend around in ways very much unlike real life limbs. This was when companies were basically learning what could be done with animation and were trying to have fun with it at the same time. And they're really like trying to push its limits and discover things. This is also why the animation's movements would be very distinctive to this era because the animators were still trying to figure out how to draw things and make them look as if they're alive and moving. Today animators have a bunch of principles that teach and guide the animator in knowing how to make things move and look good as they do it. You may have heard of some of these before. But they're, some of them are squash and strut, anticipation, follow through, drag, timing, spacing, and etc. These principles help the animated characters look closer to real life and replicates not only the real life movement, but also the illusion of how our eyes interpret that movement. The reason why old rubber hose animations look so stiff is because the animators at the time didn't have these principles yet and they were still figuring out and trying new things. As the years go on, you start seeing the difference in the animation's movements as they started to learn what makes animation tick, and they developed these principles of animation. Oh yeah, and typically they'd play ragtime music along with these cartoons. That doesn't really have to do anything in particular with the rubber hose animation style themselves, but uh, it, it, it does have to do with my uh, burst of excitement at the beginning. <laughs> because I like ragtime music. That's the rubber hose animation style in a nutshell in case you weren't sure. It not only refers to the style in which the cartoon character is drawn, but it also refers into the way in which the character is animated. But as you can see, I am not doing any animations right now. Cause this is a speed paint. And speaking of the speed paint, let's get back to the drawing itself. I tried making this look like it was an actual still frame from an old cartoon. 
maybe like a title card at the beginning of the show because I kind of got too lazy and I didn't feel like filling in the rest of the background so it's just this one color so yeah. <laughs> I don't normally cell shade my drawings because I like the soft look of erasing the shading away but for this one I did use cell shading because that's what the animators at the time would have done but like in a traditional sense. I also caked on a bunch of filters on this bad boy to try to replicate the limits of old film as well as some decoration on the film strip itself. Some of the filters I used were wet edge and outer stroke to represent the camera not quite picking up the colors properly as well as the fact that these cells would have been hand painted and thus not made perfect. I also used static and I think I put it under Gaussian blur or lens blur or something and lowered its opacity to represent film grain. I also copied the base color layers twice for each character and offset them to the left and right slightly. I then colored the right side red and the left side blue and slightly lowered their opacities to reinforce the idea that the camera is not correctly picking up the colors as well as like color bleed and stuff like that. I also put a layer over top of everything with an airbrushed circle of whitish yellow, lowered the opacity and then put the blending mode on saturation I believe to make the lighting look off in the recording quote unquote. I also drew on top some scratches because old film tapes have a ton of scratches like this because they were not only very fragile but they were also very poorly stored and preserved which is also why there are so many old films like this lost today they were either thought useless and destroyed or they eroded away from being carelessly stored this is actually the case for a lot of doctor who episodes uh, for you Doctor Who fans out there. A lot of them were treated this way and so a lot of old Doctor Who episodes are now lost. But um, I know Doctor Who is way past the 1930s but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's it's just, They were still using film strips then too. Anyway, <clears throat> I tried making the table look hand painted with watercolor or something because that's pretty much how they would have done backgrounds for cartoons. And the reason why the shadows don't look quite like they fit in with that look is because the shadows would have been animated in the same way as the characters were with ink so they would have ended up looking flat compared to the background and yeah that's the end of this drawing I didn't talk too much about the characters themselves because I felt like talking more about the processes behind this making this drawing this time but I hope you guys enjoyed that please do feel free to let me know if you have any critiques or questions about anything discussed in this video in the comments below but now it is time for the drawing of the week. This page's theme is dragons and today, since we were discussing a lot about old cartoons and animations, I want to draw Elliot from the Disney movie Pete's Dragon, the good one, not the live action remake. It's not from the same time period that I was discussing during this video, in fact it's from the 60s I believe, but yeah, I like Elliot, he's a cute dragon and I felt like drawing him. And with that we now have Charizard, my mascot Duncan the Drake, and Elliot on this page. But that's gonna be all for this video everyone, if you like what you see then please do feel free to let me know with a like, and if you're new to my channel and want more then I have many videos you can feel free to check out including speed paints, animations, and more. And of course, I draw lots and lots of dragoons and other animal characters like Kangan and Wallaby today. If you really like what you see, then why not subscribe and ring-a-ding-ding -ding that notification bell below to receive notifications for when I release new videos onto my channel. I hope you all enjoyed this video and have a fantastic day. God bless, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. <clears throat> so yeah, that's the rubber hose animation style in a nutshell, in case you weren't show. Sure, shaw, she, sha, she, sha, ho. <clears throat> anyway. I don't normally cell shade my drawings because I like the soft look of erasing and shading away. Erasing, bah, blah, 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 and lowered its opacity, rapper, tap, 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 Wow! <laughs>